Who is the Holy Spirit? Welcome to episode 20 of Anglican Catechesis, where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. Today we'll be covering questions 84 through 91 in To Be a Christian in Anglican Catechism, the official catechism of the Anglican Church in North America. I'm Father Kurt Hine, Rector of Light of Christ Anglican Church, joined today by my co-catechist, Father Isaac Rayberg, Rector of All Saints Anglican Church in San Antonio, Texas. Before we begin, though, let's let's start with a prayer. This is the Collect for the Day of Pentecost. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 So, Isaac, who is the Holy Spirit? I mean, we hear a lot about the Father and the Son, but sometimes we don't hear a lot about this third person of the Trinity, um, the Holy Spirit. That's right. Question number 84, or, or answer number 84. <laughs> God, the Holy Spirit, is the third person in the one being of the Holy Trinity, co-equal and co-eternal with God the Father and God the Son, and equally worthy of our honor and worship. Hmm. So not a not a third God, right? No nope. third person in the one being of the Holy Trinity. It's co-equal and, and, and co he is yeah. Yes, and he is a person, not just a an impersonal force. Right. Contra what the Jehovah's Witnesses teach, mm -hmm. uh, for example, that he be some sort of just energy of God. No, this the Holy Spirit is uh, a person. What, the third person of the Trinity, um, shares the same um, intellect, same mind, same power as God, co-equal, co-eternal uh, with God the Father and God the Son, and therefore equally worthy of our honor and worship. Um, yeah, the um, First Council of Constantinople uh, was really, uh, that, that was the main thing they were ironing out in terms of Trinitarian theology was articulating this last part about the uh, Holy Spirit being um, equally worthy of our honor and worship and how to articulate that. So that last uh, oh third or so of the Nicene Creed um, really articulates that very well. Right. He's the Lord and giver of life mm -hmm. is, is what the Nicene Creed says about the Holy Spirit, affirming um, his full divinity. Now, um, it's interesting because in the evangelical world, you hear a lot about Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, in some sectors of Christianity, you hear a lot about the Father. One thing that people notice when they enter an Anglican service is how much we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we're very Trinitarian. Um, yet I still think sometimes we can emphasize the Father and the Son and and sort of the, the Holy Spirit is sort of not the topic of conversation. Why, why do you think that that is, Isaac? I think a big part of that is just that's kind of the way he likes it <laughs> in that in that um when we read especially um the uh the discourses that jesus has about the holy spirit um just before his crucifixion in the gospel of john um it's it's very clear that you know what what the holy spirit does is draw us to jesus draw us to the father um that that that, that he he points to to jesus and um you know is is the means by which he's the means by which the father indwells us and things like that so right. there's um you know a, a lot of it i mean if, if you want to kind of say in these types of terms his job is is a lot more behind the scenes <laughs> mm. when it when it comes to the way that we that um the 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 trinity is expressed in the new testament yeah i heard someone say that he's the shy member of the trinity he's yeah not, he's yeah. always working always present and his function, as we'll talk about before, um, what the Holy Spirit does is he reveals Christ. And we have that beautiful Trinitarian formula from the Cappadocian Fathers. That's It's in Scripture. It's actually from St. Paul. Um, to the Father, uh, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we see this mysterious working of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in those prepositions. 
Um, and, and even as even as much as as he, you know, he he does work more behind the scenes, and um, you know, we almost never have prayers that are addressed to the Holy Spirit. Almost never. There are some. Almost. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, despite all that, you know, we, we are always very clear um, to do things in a Trinitarian way with a Trinitarian formula. In, in fact, um, when, you, when you look at the canticles in, in morning and evening prayer um, and the Psalms that we use in morning and evening prayer, why do we add the glory of Patri? Well, it's because to, to constantly remind us of the Trinitarian um, nature of the Christian faith. Right, right. And it is we don't normally pray to the Holy Spirit, but um, you can, because mm -hmm. he is fully God, as it says, equally worthy of our honor and worship. And so again, um, he's the third person of the Trinity. This does not mean, though, that he's the third wheel, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> no, no, not at God, all. And we worship yeah. him as much. So, Absolutely. okay, well, I'm excited. I think this is really good that we're talking about this, and uh, I'm excited to go through this uh, part of the, the creed. Okay. Uh, yeah, could, Question I, number 85. Um, what principal names does the New Testament give to the Holy Spirit? Uh, Jesus names the Holy Spirit paraclete, the one alongside, which signifies comforter, guide, counselor, advocate, and helper. Other, uh, other descriptions for the Holy Spirit are Spirit of God, Spirit of your Father, Spirit of Christ, and Spirit of Truth. Yeah, that's um. I, I one of the things I like I like to do when I'm looking at Bible translations is to open those passages in uh, in John's Gospel and see how they translate uh, Paraclete. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and just to kind of see what what that does in terms of the the reading of the text, because it is one of those words in Greek that um, is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so, you know, the King James, for example, usually uses the word comforter. Um, others I've seen counselor. I think the ESV prefers counselor. Um, but, but yeah, all, 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 all five of those things in our, in our, um, those translations in our question are, are all part of what it means to be a, the paraclete, comforter, guide, counselor, advocate, helper. Um, and it, at times it was used in the ancient world kind of in illegal terms, you know, you're, you're, the defense attorney <laughs> yes, was the parody. Yes, yeah. that's yes, and there's a. It's really comforting to have a good defense attorney. That's right to to guide you through the trial, <laughs> right? It, it, sometimes when I think of comforter, I think of like just a soft blanket, you know, filled with down. Um, I don't think that that's the kind of comfort we're talking about with the Holy Spirit. Um, it's a it's a more a gritty sort of comfort. It's the comfort of of God who is alongside you and with you in the battle. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's a, it's a different kind of comfort than what we uh, are addicted to in, uh, in America. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so looking up para, uh, paracletos in, at the, the Greek here, it says uh, the BDAG has um, one who appears on another's behalf, mediator, intercessor, helper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the comfort comes from the fact that God is with us. And of course, there is no greater comfort than than that, because if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. So and then and then these other descriptions, spirit of God, spirit of your father, spirit of Christ, um, that genitive there of uh, Christ um, is probably we should see it as from um, mm -hmm. from God, um, from Christ. Um, there is some debate about this, obviously, in, in Christianity, about how this works between the East and the West. But there's um, a procession of, of the Spirit from God, um, uh, from the Father, and from the Son, um, in, in some sense. And uh, that's what's said here, that, there's, that there's, this relation, there's this relationship between the persons of the Trinity. Yeah, that's that. That's right, and um, there's there's some interesting in, in the in the church fathers um, re, uh, re, regarding this dual title of the spirit spirit of God, spirit of your Father, spirit of of Christ, and usually, you know, from the from the perspective of the fathers, when it says spirit of God, they are thinking spirit of, spirit of the Father. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to find that uh, 
that great passage. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, St. Hilary of Poitiers, uh, he, he says, um, you know, the spirit of him who, who was raised from the dead is no different fr from the spirit of him who raised him from the dead. It's not the case that two spirits indwell, nor is it one that indwells different from the other. There is in us the spirit of God. There is also in us the spirit of Christ. And when the spirit of Christ is in us, there is also the spirit of God. Basically saying this yeah. is one, two, two titles for one person. Right. It, it's, it's a very, it's a very neat, um, neat, neat 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 uh discussion there and then again we see we see both of these things being used in um in, in john john 14 both both of these titles uh or both of these processions so to speak mm -hmm. um not to offend our any of our any eastern orthodox listeners we have um on that right right and i think there's ways to understand the double procession that are consistent with the east and but we're not going to go into yeah into we don't need to go into right that, but, but yeah there are yeah but and, and, um, and that's one of the reasons why our articles does do do affirm the double procession. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. And, and it, there's a great talking about comfort here to know that the spirit that raised this is Paul again, that raised Jesus from the dead is in us giving life even to our right. bodies. And when we face death, like giving us that incredible hope that which is a, a confidence in the promise of God. That's what that hope, hope means that our um our bodies, our entire cells will be resurrected on the last day to be with God for eternity. And so that this is this is a great, great comfort for us. Okay, qu um, question 86. What are the particular ministries of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit imparts life to every living thing in creation, reveals God's word to his people, and calls sinners to a new life of faith in the saving and life-giving work of Jesus. The Holy Spirit unites Christians to Jesus, indwelling them, convicting them of sin, giving them spiritual gifts, and bearing spiritual fruits in their lives. Hmm. He does a whole lot for uh, yeah. someone working kind of behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he imparts life to every living creature. So the, the reason that there is life or that there is anything um, sustained at all in existence and it doesn't just drop back into non-existence is the spirit of God. Um, and then he's involved in the recreation work here too, right? Mm -hmm. Revealing God's word. So without the spirit, the, the Bible is a dead and closed book to us. Um, and it's then the doctrine of illumination, one of my favorites. Yeah, exactly. We need, and that's why when we read scripture, we really should pray for the gift of the Holy spirit and reading that. That's right. Um, and then Again, calling sinners to a new life of faith in the saving and living work of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is constantly lifting up Christ and glorifying Christ so that we can know the Father. I mean, that's what he's constantly doing in our life. And that's how you know the Holy Spirit's presence some, somewhere, is that Christ is being glorified. That's right. That's right. He, you know, he's, he's the one who makes the word and the sacraments efficacious. Uh, for, for the Christian. He's the one speaking through the word in the sacrament, active in the word in the sacrament. Exactly. And that's how you know that the Holy Spirit is it working. You can recognize the Holy Spirit through his action, which is more of the second part of this, right? Uniting us to Jesus, mm -hmm. indwelling us. And in that indwelling, what does he do? He convicts us of our sin. <laughs> so not condemnation, but conviction. Yeah. And th you know the difference because condemnation is Satan using your sin to drive you away from God, drive you away from Christ into isolation and shame and guilt. And conviction is that feeling of what, well, and there, it, there is shame and guilt with conviction, but it's the Holy Spirit driving you to the cross so that you can be liberated right. and forgiven. And that's how you know it's the Holy Spirit. So if that's happening in your life, if like you're aware when you sin and, and you, um, are sorry for that and and you go to christ for forgiveness that's that's the holy spirit that's working yeah i, I do think that's what saint paul is talking about in second uh, corinthians when he refers to um the godly sorrow that brings life and the mm. worldly sorrow that brings death right is that 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 contradistinction there exactly and uh and then spiritual gifts which we're going to get into here in a bit um you know all the obedience of the Christians is actually rooted in the grace of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then this, which, yeah. which then bears the spiritual fruit. Right. Peace, joy, love, faith, kindness, love, gentleness, joy, peace. Yeah. Yes. 
I was trying to remember the kids song on that and it, it wasn't working. Well, we're going to get there in question 89 here in a bit. So we'll get there. Excellent. <laughs> but we're not going to sing it with the kids song unless, yeah. unless uh, Kurt wants to. Yeah. Uh, number 87. <laughs> number 87. How does the Holy Spirit strengthen you for life in Christ? The Holy Spirit ba bears witness that I am a child of God, stirs my heart continually to worship and to pray, and inspires me to holiness and good works in Christ. I, I really, I really like the idea that the Holy Spirit is the one who inspires holiness and good works. Hmm. Um, if you, if you ever have run across someone, um, our, our Catholic friends might call it scrupulosity, hmm. someone who is just constantly driven by guilt that they're not doing the right things in, in Jesus. That's usually not the work of the Holy Spirit. No, the the whole the Holy Spirit brings with him joy and peace, as we're going to talk about in a moment, um, and an excitement, a, a joy, a thankfulness, and that some of the reformers called this the new obedience. Right? It's not an it's not an obedience of of the slave, but it's the obedience of a of a beloved son or daughter, yes. and uh, it's a beautiful thing when we can experience that to know the love of God, and because of that to um, obey him freely, not out of compulsion, but out of a joy. I mean, that that's the Holy Spirit, and that's what the Holy Spirit's work in our life looks like. Number 88, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? The scriptures teach that by repenting and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven my sins, and I receive the Holy Spirit, who gives me new birth in Christ and frees me from the power of sin. Yeah, yeah so, and it is important that baptism is our sacrament of receiving the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, and this is right out of the book of Acts, the first uh, sermon of Peter, when he says, believe and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children and for all those who are far off to as many as our, the Lord our God will call. Um, baptism is a sacrament and it, it gives us that gift. Now, we need faith in order to to appropriate that gift. Right? If Amazon drops a, a a gift off at your door, um, you can just leave it there. Um, so there's a necessity to appropriate it to to bring it into your life. But it is objectively given um, in our baptisms. Absolutely, and and when you look at um, Acts chapter eight, where uh, the apostles run across some folks that had been baptized but hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. Not only do they get the laying on of hands, but they also get baptized again because they they did not have actual Christian baptism. They just had a pre-Christian baptism, the baptism of John. Right. They just had the baptism of John. They needed the baptism into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so that's a wonderful thing for us. We we know that we have that gift. And so we shouldn't be thinking that um, we need to go out and and sort of find the Holy Spirit. We have him. It's right. more of um, utilizing or, or living into the gift that we already have. Right. And, right. and that's, and that's where um, praying to the father for the, for the Holy Spirit's gift is really important as a, as a Christian practice to always be asking for that um, new infilling of that gift that we already have. And we see this in the rite of sac of, of uh, confirmation, where um, the confirmant is, uh, we're, we're, we pray for the confirmant to be strengthened in the Holy Spirit, right? Um, which is what literally what confirmation means is strengthening. So. And in and in Acts, you see all the time those that have already been baptized receive um, renewed outpourings of the Holy Spirit, and that's right. That, and you always see with that that He gives them boldness, courage, and mm -hmm. to live into the gift that they've been given for the proclamation and pro and um, progress of the gospel and the kingdom of God um, on earth. And so that is something that we should be um, praying for constantly. Okay, so uh, 89, here we go. What is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the very character of Jesus developing us, develop, developing in us through the work of the Holy Spirit, hmm. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, amen. Yeah. Well, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is also referred to as the finger of God. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a really cool um, name for the for the Holy Spirit because, because 
uh, the Ten Commandments were writ were originally written by the finger of God. It was the Holy Spirit that wrote those those commandments into the stone tablets. And then you see in Pentecost the Holy Spirit fall down. And what is He doing? Well, the finger of God is writing the law of God into the hearts now of His new covenant people. And and so the Holy Spirit is like the the chisel that is the breaking off all of those uh, parts that need to you know, the sin and the selfishness and, and is forming us into the shape, right, of Christ, of his character. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Number 90, what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Among the many gifts of the Holy Spirit named in the New Testament are faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, other languages, tongues, the interpretation of other languages, the words of wisdom and knowledge. The Spirit distributes gifts to individuals as he wills for the sake of the body of Christ. Other gifts in the New Testament include administration, service, encouragement, evangelism, teaching, giving, leadership, and mercy. Jesus promises that the Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Yeah, and it's important to note there are different lists in the epistles of, of gifts of the Spirit. Um, and, and I would caution against over-systematizing those types of things, um, you know, I, I saw a lot of that in, in in my youth in some of the some of the, the circles I traveled in, and um, there was a, there was a lot of reading into the into the text, kind of bringing outside systems in rather than letting the text speak to itself. Yeah. I think it's important just to see these are the things that in in different contexts and in different ways that the the New Testament speaks of the gifts of the Spirit, yeah, different the, things that He gives us. Right, even in the Old Testament when they're putting together the different articles for the tabernacle, the Holy Spirit comes upon a, a certain man. I can't remember. I'm going to fail my Bible trivia here. But a certain man for the express purpose of doing the art and craftsmanship right. necessary for creating the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> right, right. So, and he ends up having an apprentice as well who seems to also have been gifted by the Holy Spirit. And yeah, they, they're kind of in, they're already craftsmen. But they're given right. special gifts from the Holy Spirit um, to to aid them in their craftsmanship. Yeah, uh, elevating and perfecting the, the natural gifts that they have been given already. So it's, it's a beautiful thing to think about whatever our vocation or calling is. When we ask the, God, the Father for the Holy Spirit, he gives it and he's going to elevate our, our gifts um, for the blessing and flourishing of others and, and for the fullness of, of ourselves as well. Um, for the glory of God. So there's an incredible opportunity no matter. So yeah, I, I very much agree with you that this is a great list, but it's no, and by no means comprehensive. Right, right. Carpentry Absolutely. is not on here, for example, but it, it should be. <laughs> right. <laughs> Those guys from the, from the uh, tabernacle might, uh, might, might be, might be uh, thinking there's some incompleteness to this list. <laughs> yeah. Why did you put carpentry in here? Or, or right. Did you say today, uh, coding or something? Yeah. Right. <laughs> So uh, question 91, 91, why does the Holy Spirit give such gifts? The Holy Spirit equips and empowers believers with gifts for, for service in the worship of Jesus Christ, for the building up of his church, and for witness and mission to the world. And that's exactly what we see happening with those guys in the tabernacle, um, is, is that um, he's equipping them for the worship, to enable the worship, to empower the church, building up, building up the church in, in an Old Testament sense. Um, and, the ta and that was to be a witness to the pagans. Right. And now the Holy Spirit is working in his church to bind us together in love so that um, we can use our gifts for the mutual advocation of each other, for the lifting up of Christ, um, to be a light to the world. So the Holy Spirit is absolutely necessary. <laughs> we need him um, for, for doing and, and he's And he's uh, there. I mean, if we're, yeah, and if, if we are, um, as, as the articles talk about, uh, uh, you know the 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 the, congr the church is a congregation of faithful men where the word of God is rightly preached and the sacraments are duly administered. He will be there. Yeah, you know we, he he will be there. And, and while we can certainly pray and ask for strengthening and kind of a more obvious outpouring, be assured he's there already. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's uh let's walk in step with what he's doing. Is that's right. As Paul Paul teaches us in Galatians. All right. Well, let's go ahead and end, end with his prayer, um, a prayer for the Holy Spirit's ministry. Um, let us pray. 
Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in me the fire of your love. Direct and rule my heart in all things. Empower me for witness and ministry and daily increase me in me your gifts and fruit to the glory of God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Anglican Catechesis, where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a comment below. You can also take Anglican Catechesis with you on the go by subscribing to the podcast. You can find the link in the YouTube description. Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.